Hello, welcome to another vlog. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I haven't done a post-processing video for ages, but I took some astro shots the other night from my front garden with Orion and the Pleiades waning over the lake. So I thought I'd give you a quick walkthrough of my post-processing for astrophotography. So we're going to start off with our six raw files imported into Lightroom and we start by processing one of them in the develop module. So there's quite a few things we need to do in Lightroom before we get into Photoshop. Um, I'm going to move through this pretty quickly. Um, it's really intended for people who do have some experience, so I'm not going to hang about otherwise this video will be far too long. So first off, I'm going to set my camera calibration to neutral. I'm going to apply chromatic aberration and lens profile. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to level off the horizon of the lake. And then I'm going to set an 8x10 crop because I don't want that tree that's up in the top corner. But I do want some foreground, otherwise there's no context for just a slab of sky. And the next thing I'm going to do is Bizarrely, you might think, I'm going to put a grad on the bottom of the image. And the reason I'm doing this is because I don't want the whole bottom of the image to be just a slab of black. I tend to find that with astrophotography, there's two extremes that you see regularly. One is that the foreground is purely silhouette, which is fine if it's an interesting silhouette like, I don't know, a castle or something. The other is where the foreground has been exposed brightly because of people trying to capture the light in the sky and the foreground looks like daylight. And for me, that just doesn't work. So what I'm going to do here, because my foreground exposure was very dark, I'm just going to put about a half a stop, 0.6 of a stop there. Got the shadows coming up a little bit and that'll, that's enough. Just so that it's not a complete slab of black so there's some context for it. Next thing is a strong contrast tone curve and then some very basic adjustments. Now the first thing is white balance. What I'm going to do is pull vibrance and saturation right up to the top and you can see that it's virtually pure orange. So when I move the white balance slider, what I'm looking for is about 50-50, and that will give me the closest white balance. What, I'm, what I don't like with astrophotography is when the sky background is tinted blue, or, or sometimes you see it in a, quite a brown color, because the night sky is black. What I'm interested in are the stars and the nebulas and the Milky Way. So I try and get it as, as close to black as I can. So our starting point is to get the white balance pretty much about 50-50 blue to orange. Don't really need to do anything with magenta. We'll put these back to where they were. And be very careful with these because I don't want to do too much. Unlike ordinary landscape photography, what you're looking to do with the night sky is introduce more contrast. So if you pull the shadows out like you normally do, what you're going to find is that you're just going to flatten the image. So actually we want to pull the shadows down a little. I don't want to stretch my histogram. You can see it's clipping at both ends, but it's not too far off. A little bit of contrast, a little bit of clarity, and that's pretty much going to do it for Lightroom. All our settings are selected, so we'll synchronize those. Perfect. Now we're going to edit in as layers in Photoshop. Okay, so you notice that I did nothing around detail and noise reduction in Lightroom. This is where we're going to handle it in Photoshop. So the first thing we need to do is to duplicate all of those layers. This copied set of layers and we're going to do our standard auto align. Okay, so we've auto aligned those layers and you can see it's uh, created a bit of an edge. So we'll sort that out later. But I always just quickly hide some layers to check that the alignment is absolutely spot on and it is that's absolutely fine now what this set of layers which we're now going to convert to a smart object is going to be used as a foreground drag it down to the bottom and hide it so now we're just dealing with these layers here as the sky 
So the first thing we need to do is to align them because obviously the stars were moving between each exposure. Although I've kept the exposure reined in at, I think, 20 seconds, so I'm, I'm quite pleased. I don't have any um, streaking at all, which is great, not even in the corners. There's two ways to do it. One is to let Photoshop do the work and the other is to manually align them. So the first thing we do is attempt to let Photoshop do the work because that'll save us a lot of time. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to apply a mask to this top layer. And then what we're going to do is with a black brush, and I'll just hide these other layers, we're going to take a black brush and we're going to get rid of the foreground. And the reason for that is we don't want Photoshop using any foreground markers for the alignment because if it concentrates on those it will fail for the stars. Also you see there's some clouds just here so I'm also going to mask those so that if they've moved between images it won't be using those to create the alignment. So that's pretty much it. And now what I need to do by holding down Alt and Command I can copy that layer mask to each of the other layers we're using for the sky. And now we'll attempt an auto align. So now, obviously, we want to switch off the layers sequentially and see if any of the stars are moving relative to each other. And you can see, as I switch the layers on and off, Photoshop really has made a complete Horlix of it. So, not a problem, we're going to align them manually. So the next thing we do is we just simply delete these masks because we don't need these anymore. And I'm not going to undo the auto align because at least it's put them somewhat closer together. Okay, so now we have to manually align these layers. And it's a really easy process, but it is slightly time consuming. But it's worth it. You will get a far, far better outcome if, if you follow this process. So it's really simple. We just want to hide the layers. And what we're going to do is use the bottom layer as our reference layer. So everything will be aligned to this. And as we align these layers manually, we'll do them one at a time, always referring to the bottom layer. That way, if we have any slight misalignments as we go up the stack, we're not propagating errors so that by the time we get to the top, we're as far out as we are now. So the next thing to do is make the next layer above visible and change the blend mode to difference. And you can see here that what's happened now is that we have only stars showing where they're aligned differently. So what we're now going to do is manual alignment. And it, it's a really easy methodical process, but it does take a little bit of time. So the first thing we need to do is to command T so we're in transform mode and we're transforming this layer above our reference layer. We're going to zoom in right to the center and you can see these halos where the stars are slightly misaligned. So I'm just going to adjust my layer a few pixels and you can see they've disappeared. But if we zoom back out, obviously other areas of the picture still have misalignments. So the next thing we'll do is we'll head up into this corner. Um, so I'm going to zoom in again and then using my navigator because it's quicker than dragging the hand around the screen. So we've zoomed up to this top corner now and I'm just going to hold control and this allows me then just to move the corner very slightly. And over to the other corner, again holding the control key while I drag the layer. And I'm looking basically to get all of these speckles to disappear so that the difference blending mode is showing us that we have no difference between the two layers. Something like that. Now you don't have to be absolutely bang on precise with this. What happens is that when we switch it to a smart object, uh, median stacking mode, what it'll do is it, it will look across all the layers and it will show the pixels that appear on more of the layers. So these slight variations will be eliminated by that process as well. So the next thing I'm going to do just to get it as accurate as possible, I'm going to click on the warp button up here and that allows me then to just warp areas of this layer. So as you can see, it's just simply a matter of reviewing each area of the layer and just dragging it ever so slightly to reduce as much of these difference halos as you can. Fine, I'm happy with that. That's close enough. 
So you can see there's just the odd speckle here and there, but nothing major. And if I hide and show this layer, you can see the pixels aren't jumping at all between those two layers. So we'll move on to the next layer and make that visible, make it difference, and repeat the process. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video here, come back to you when this is done. Okay, so we've now got all of our sky layers aligned and we make them all visible and we're going to group those into a smart object. And I'm just going to crop in to take out those borders now that we've got everything aligned. Okay, so we've now got our final composition. With this smart object here, we want to now do our noise reduction. So we're going to use a median stack mode. And there we are. We've, we've made a huge difference on the noise reduction. So I'm now going to just apply a quick curves adjustment layer to our sky. Pull down and create some more contrast. Pull that down, pull that up. Just roll off the highlights a little bit. So now I'm going to convert these to a smart object. What we're going to do is we're going to create a luminosity layer, which is separate from the color layer, and that will give us our final output. So what I'm going to do is take this sky layer, duplicate it twice. This top layer will be for our nebulosity. I just use three letter labels, saves a lot of typing. This layer will be for our detail, and this layer for our color. We're going to process these separately from the bottom up. So with our color layer, first thing we're going to do is a noise reduction. So we want to go to filter, noise, dust and scratches. So the settings that I've got here, radius of 5, threshold of 25, they work for the size of raw file that I'm working with, but you want to maybe play with those. And what you're looking to do is to pretty much only leave the brightest stars visible, so that's fine. And a little bit more smoothing with a Gaussian blur of about three pixels. That looks pretty good. Okay, so then we'll just finally add a curves adjustment to that, similar to the one we did earlier, just to keep that contrast going. Because what we don't want to do with this process is to wash it out. Combine these into a smart object. Rename that back to color. I'm now going to work on the detail layer. Now the detail layer is a black and white layer. So the first thing we're going to do is a black and white adjustment layer. And you want to play with these sliders a little bit to just boost up the contrast. Blue and magenta work well, but don't go over the top with them. So now I'll combine those into a smart object and then the nebulosity layer. Now with this we do similar to what we did with the color layer. So we're going to take out the noise with dust and scratches filter, use the same settings as we did previously for the color layer. Also the Gaussian blur, three pixels. Uh, now we're going to add a black and white conversion and with this one, we can be slightly, you see, if we pull up these sliders, enhance the ne nebulosity, and then finally, a, another curves adjustment layer, similar sort of curve, pull the shadows down, pull the midtones up, but then roll off the highlights a little bit. And you can see there's a good degree of contrast in that, which is what we're looking for. We'll combine these into a smart object. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hide the nebulosity layer. So what we want to do is copy all of this detail layer. Command A to select it all, Command C to copy. Then we want to add a layer mask to the nebulosity. Alt click on it, Control V to paste in the details layer, and then Command I to invert it. Let me go back to here. What this is now doing is creating the basis for our luminosity uh, layer. What we'll now do is group these into a folder and call it LUM for luminosity. And our blend mode, we switch that to luminosity. You can see we've got the, the, the faintest of bits of Milky Way in this part of the sky above Orion, and we've still managed to pull that through. That's starting to look pretty good. Well, uh, I'm just going to put a vibrance just to tone down that colors in this area here. 
group this lot together. That's our sky with our foreground enabled. What we're going to do is just add a mask to the sky and with a large black brush we'll just bring through our foreground. Now as I said at the outset I'm not a big fan of astrophotography where the sky has got a heavy blue or orange tint. Um, so we've managed to, to retain a, a nice dark black background, much more uh, accurate to the night sky. But this area down here where I've got the street lights glow, I'm not happy with those colors and there's not much I can do to actually get rid of them. So what I am gonna do is just add a color balance adjustment layer and just tone these down a little bit, but I'm only interested in that lower area. So I'm going to mask off my main sky area because I don't want that color balance applied to the uh, the main area of sky. Now it's not the best picture in the world but I hope it's been helpful to show you how I take a, a set of raw files. I normally only take five or six because uh, otherwise it would take forever to sort out and I find with five or six layers for the sky it gives me enough to work with. Um, I'm quite happy with this one particularly because as I mentioned the Milky Way in that part of the sky is virtually non-existent. I mean, we're not talking galactic center here. So to get this sort of detail here for the Milky Way, I'm, I'm very pleased with that. Very little you can do about uh, street light glow in the UK, even on Anglesey, it's a bit of a headache, but I hope uh, it's, it's been helpful. And um, next time I'll probably be out and about in daylight somewhere. So. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this uh, and if you haven't yet subscribed why not do it now and join me next time. Thanks a lot for watching.